Alright, you're all probably wondering what's with the darkness. Well, last time, this happened. Yes! Oh shoot, that's going to be a problem. And we learned that somehow all the cameras in the studio were hooked up to the same network thingy. And they all broke at the same time. Except for the one in Misery Mire, but I really don't feel like recording in a place with so many ponies. So while our tech guy tries to sort this all out, I have no camera. But this is perfect opportunity for me to bring up one of my more favorite hobbies. Flaming Chainsaw Juggling. I am doing it right now. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Let's get down to the real point. A type of TV show that has plenty of games made for it. That I probably should start with... You got it, Drew. How about Pramal Shah? Come on down! Yep, game shows. Most of these will consist of Wii games, as there is a huge boom of game show video games on that system. I'm not quite sure why, since a lot of these shouldn't use the motion control. So the answer probably is money. Today's game is Deal or No Deal, a game that a game show that probably was credited as having 26 Vanna Whites, which goes to show how thrilling it is when they have to advertise sex appeal for it. The premise of the show is that a contestant picks one briefcase out of 26, each with an amount of money in it, from one million dollars down to a penny. The contestant would then pick to remove briefcases and then be heckled by a banker offering money for the first one they choose. With the logic being that each one removed, the odds of the one having the million dollars or some high number has increased. When, in fact, your actual odds don't. You still have a 1 in 26 shot of getting a million dollars. Better odds than most, I guess, though. This game was a huge hit and ran for years, despite almost never giving away its grand prize, even after augmenting the show to add multiple million dollar briefcases. The video games has a few obstacles to go through, the main one being, we all probably see, that there's no reason why we'd ever take the deal. It's not like that we will shoot out a million dollars if you win. The other problem is that this can be a very boring game. Even for a party game, if you have your drunk friends over, after one round of them shouting out numbers and whether or you should take the deal, I can't see this being very fun. Now, you might have noticed I haven't shown any clips of the game yet. Well, I wanted to air out some preconceptions first, then dive in. Alright, now that's over, let's dive. The game starts with what I like to call an idiot challenge, where Wii games will make you hit both the A and B buttons to move on. I'm not sure which I'm calling an idiot, the people that have trouble with this, or the designers for thinking that one button was not enough. The latter, actually. Let's dive into the TV show mode where you have to pick an avatar, these developers were a bit lazy, so you get to use your own me. Luckily, Vitreus made one for me. Let's see. No. 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 What the heck is that? Let's see. Ah, oh, that's me! I'm gonna kill Vitreus. And he spelt my name wrong! <sighs> anyway, sorry for that frightening me. Sure, that's the worst thing you will see, so let's start. Okay. Here's an issue. Loading screens in this game are just explanations of the rules. This one states that the entire premise of the show, the last line states that there are special events such as a million dollar mission that can help you win even more money. So have fun trying to beat the banker. However, without the monetary gain of this monetary gain of this game, is there really any fun in this? Let's start. Hello and welcome to Deal or No Deal. I'm Howie Mandel. Oh dear, what is that? Clearly that is actually now one of the most frightening things. There cannot be anything worse, is there? Ladies, please. Oh, this can't get any work. Hello, ladies. Hi, Howie. Colt! It's a Colt! We have stumbled upon Howie Mandel's Colt! Okay, I am slightly still confused by this design choice. The creating team had to make their own creations for the models, and yet decided not to make their own character creation for the game for you to use, and instead piggybacked off the Mii system. At least when Mario Kart and Smash Bros. does it, they made the system. Alright, so let's get started with the next thing to do, which is pick a case. And here's something that's just a bit off about this game. Due to it being on the Wii, they make you pick a point on the screen to select the case. And maybe it's just how mine is set up, but the motion controls for the Wii aren't the best. 
and it get, can, can get pretty shaky. Now, granted, you can choose anything, and the odds of you winning don't exactly drop. However, if only the Wii remote had some sort of directional pad that you could remove the remove this aspect from. Oh wait, it does! Why can't we just use that? Anyway, pick a case, any case, and the game goes as always. You select more cases and open them up, hoping for the lowest amounts. The, the dealer equation, I mean, I mean man, will give you more money for your deal. However, since the highest amount is always on the table, you will probably do what I did. Not helped by the fact that my first game, I kept the million dollars on the table the entire damn time. Until the end, when it gives you a choice to switch cases. I figured by this point, I had chosen amazingly, and I, I didn't do the switch. I, I should have known better. Still, 50000 is a good day's work. More than I'll see from playing Deal or No Deal, the video game. Also, there are a lot of cutscenes in this. You hit a button to skip Howie saying your choice, hit again for the girl opening the case, hit again to the, your reaction, once more to skip Howie telling you to pick another goddamn case, your A button is going to kill you once this game is done. Now, as if they knew this game wasn't going to hold itself, they did come up with a few side games, like Push Your Luck. Just reminding me of another game show that got a video game that I'm going to have to tackle eventually. The goal of this game, which is nicely stated on the loading screen again, is you pick uh, where you round each round, you and your competitors choose cases to remove. If you choose a money case, you continue playing. If you choose an empty case, the game is over. Kinda like a version of Minesweeper, except there's no clues, or bombs, or fun. The game ends when you're the last man standing. Also, the voice in the beginning? Ready, push, your luck. I would say that that start voice is the creepiest thing I've ever heard, but... Something has taken its place beforehand. And then there is Sharpshooter, a minigame that is supposed to test your shooting skills. That ain't my accent, that's actually how they wrote it. Pretty much just shoot as many cases as you can by pressing the A button as quickly as you can. You can build up a multiplier by not missing. Once all the cases are shot, the player with the highest score wins. And now here's the weird part that is that you have to play it with a computer. And get this, I actually lost the first round against the computer. And that still didn't stop me from earning one of the game's awards. Oh, yeah, that. This game uses the standard achievement guide that became popular with Xbox and PlayStation. I actually got to give them a bit of credit. This actually kind of means you can have an excuse to keep playing this. Because some of the awards are like winning over 5 million or scoring a certain set of points in all of the mini games. The worst ones are the ones that require another player. Since even in this, this studio, where people will play snake, rattle, and roll, and review manuals, I can't get a single one of them to help me! Another minigame is a take on blackjack, which you need to get closest to $2,100 without going over. However, unlike casino style, the dealer isn't playing, so you're against your computer opponents. I think the welcoming voice is also creepy again. Hello and welcome to blackjack. Also, it looks like they're throwing briefcases instead of cards. And now I can tell you the truly worst part of this game. There is a mode here for you to play as the banker. That's right, a mode where you can effectively replace an algorithm. Because I'm sorry to break it to everyone, but that's all the banker ever was. A calculated formula based on the remaining values on the board. They're trying to deduce what amount to give you so that you will quit in trying and take the handed money. To make matters worse, there are caps on the amount you can give. It's like a $10,000 range, $10,000 range, which doesn't sound too bad, however, to make this even more better, due to this being on the Wii, you have to move your cursor to scroll the numbers up and down with these buttons, because directional pads won't do it. What the hell is with this game in hatred for the easiest control settings possible? And making this even more rich are these challenges for giving them out low amounts of money in this. Now that shouldn't be a problem, as you would have to be a kind of masochist to try and get everything with this. I played for an hour in total, well, to record. I thought I was going to do it, but then I gave up because this game is so repetitive. Wait, wait, what the hell? What is up with the audience's faces? The hollow eyes, the ghastly empty smiles? What living hell are they in? 
Is this what happens when you disobey Howie's cult? Duh! They made their computer players realistic using their character creator engine as well. Why the hell did they skimp on the audience? Why not do what every other Wii game did and use the Mii system? You know what, actually? I, 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 got, I got the answer. It's right here. They just didn't care. We rest our case. And that's my final review. You can just should not care about this game. It gives you really no reason to. Unless you wish to be kept up all night by character designs from Uncanny Valley and the audience from Hell, the mini game, the mini games aren't that spectacular, and the award system doesn't give you enough of a challenge to try and keep playing. For some credit, it is faithful. It is a faithful video game of the game show, but that game show is simply selecting cases at random and hoping for the best. And luck-based games don't exactly do well when you're used to playing games where your choices matter, even if it's just jump on the first Goomba or let it hit you. The only thing I'm going to take from this game is probably this. Hi, Howie. Great, now we've got stock footage. Tune in for my next game show review, unless we can get the cameras back up and running. Eh, anyway, come back for a game where the price is right.